he is making peace with his past. He says, I can I consider that trials and disappointments are sometimes for our good. And I thought God might perhaps have permitted this in order to teach me wisdom and resignations. For he had hitherto shadowed me with the wings of his mercy and by his invisible but powerful hand brought me the way I knew not. He allowed this to happen. And if he allowed me to suffer, I comforted myself not in the goodness of the master, but the goodness of God, that if he allowed me to go through this kind of suffering, that some kind of way, there's something that he wants me to get out of it, or he wouldn't have allowed it to happen. I don't know if that helps you like it helps me, but, 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 but that really helped me. As I said, worry is the fruit of pride. It's us trying to figure out what we can do to solve our own problem. And God wants us to always be leaning on Him. And so, what are some of the things that you can do? Because we're not, we're not real good at just sitting around doing nothing, and I think people think to wait on God means to just sit and do absolutely nothing, but that's not really true. It's to do what you can do, but trust God to do the things you can't do. For example, if you need a job. Well, don't just sit in your house and pray for God to get you a job. <laughs> you, your part is to actively and aggressively look for a job. Put in applications, call, pay, do every day, every day, every day. Show yourself faithful and maybe you're looking for a certain kind of job, but you might have to take, you might have to humble yourself enough to say, God, I'll do any kind of job until you help me get the job that I want. I've heard people say, well, I'm not gonna take a job until I get one that is really good use of my skills. Well, that's not humility either. We need to be willing to do anything we need to do to support ourselves and our families while we're waiting on God to bring the right thing into our life. So you, when you are having a problem, you can, we've said this already, but pray. Keep a good confession. Let your conversation be in line with your prayer. Verse chapter, uh, Matthew 6, 25, Jesus says this. Don't worry about your life. Don't worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink or about your body or what you wear. Is not life more important than food? And is not the body more important than clothes? He's saying, this is not logical. You got your priorities out of order. It's irrational. It's, it, it, it doesn't make sense. It's unreasonable. Now, why is worry unreasonable? Well, there are a couple reasons. First, because worry exaggerates the problem. It never makes a problem smaller. It always makes it bigger. Have you noticed somebody says something bad about you? The more you think about it, the bigger it gets. Or you got a problem you start worrying about it, the more you worry about it, does the problem shrink with your worry? No, it always gets bigger. Worry exaggerates, it's irrational, it's unreasonable. It makes it bigger, it grows the problem out of proportion. And not only does, is worry exaggerating your problem, worry doesn't work. It never has worked. It is worthless, it is stewing without doing, it doesn't make any difference in your life. You see, to worry about something you can't change is useless. And to worry about something you can change is stupid. Just go change it. In either case, worry is not the answer. Worry doesn't work. It's unreasonable. Second, uh, Jesus says worry is unnatural. It's unnatural. Why? Because in the entire universe, the only creations of God that worry are human beings. Birds don't worry, cows don't worry, dogs don't worry, cats don't worry. Cats create worries, but they don't worry. <laughs> worry is unnatural. What do I mean by that? Because you weren't born with it. There are no born worriers. You might think you are, but you're not. You're not a born worrier. You learned it. How do we overcome worry in our lives? How do we dispense with it? How do we put it aside? And so I want you to turn, if you will, to Matthew chapter 6, the Sermon on the Mount. And I want us to read the 25th through the 34th verses. 
And in this passage, Jesus gives us some arguments of why we should not worry. And it's interesting also that one of his methods of teaching was repetition. And so in this passage, you'll find six times he talks about worry. Three times he makes the statement, do not worry, do not worry, do not worry. And so what you have to ask is this, if he said, do not worry, is that what he meant? I think it is. Secondly, if he said, do not worry, does that mean that he will enable us to so live our lives? We don't have to worry? Yes, that's true. So let's look at this passage and then think about it. What are you worried about today? Have you ever thought about the consequences that your worrying is having in your life and upon your life? So beginning with this 25th verse of Matthew chapter 6, listen to what he says. For this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you'll put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? So he's asking the question. Look at the birds of the air, that they do not sow nor reap nor gather into barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not worth much more than they? And then he says, And who of you by being worried can add a single hour to his life? And why are you worried about clothing? Observe how the lilies of the field grow. They do not toil, nor do they spin. Yet I say to you that not even Solomon in all his glory clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, will he not much more clothe you, O you of little faith? Do not worry then, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or what shall we wear for clothing? But the Gentiles, that is, those who are unbelievers, eagerly seek all these things, for your heavenly Father knows that you need all these things. So I want you to do me a favor with the piece of paper you have. I want you to, you go into the dealer right now. And I want you to talk to the, I want you to talk to your maker. And I want you to say, this is where I think I need to move, the needle to be moved. Amen. Yeah, maybe that may not be it, but start with what you think it is. Amen. I don't know cars, but I'm like, Jamie was like, what's up? He was like, I don't know, bro, but it's knocking. I don't know. But I also know it can't be what I think it is because it's got oil in it and I changed the oil. Amen. It can't be that. Amen. So whatever it is, it's on them. It's not on me. Are you listening to what I'm telling you? I'm telling you that you come into this world with some stuff and God already know what you come with and he going to fix it. Amen. And if he does not fix it, Paul, Paul said three times he came to the Lord and told the Lord to remove it. And God said, I'm not removing it. We're going to let you hold on to it because I need to keep you close to me and that's going to keep you coming close to me. Amen. So there's some things you're going to take to the deal and he, he may, the, God may decide that we're not going to fix it, but we gonna, we, I'm going to work with you with it. Amen. Come on. Praise God. Amen. So some stuff he's just going to get rid of for you. Amen. Some stuff you're just going to go cold turkey. Some other stuff that it may not be gotten rid of, but God's like, I'm going to show you how to make that bring us closer together. So I want you to think right now before we get started. What do you need to move the needle to be moved right now? What part of your life do you need to move? God, I just, can you do something in this area? Can you do something in that area? Hey Amen. I'm going to take you to the world. I'm so excited. Like, I'm like, I'm, I'm not only does God hold me accountable to the word, Didi hold me accountable to the word. Hey Amen. So I don't even get to come in here. Y'all might be thinking I'm just coming in here just a couple minutes before I got in here. And I just, I promise you I did. I promise you, I've been studying the word. I've been asking God, God, what do they need so they don't just have church, but they, whatever. I don't care if they're in school, I want them to be blessed. I don't care if they're playing sports, I want them to be blessed. I don't care in their health, I want them to be blessed. I want them to look at their bank account and be blessed. Lord, I'm not up here just talking. I want their relationship to be blessed, Lord. I, everything they touch, I want it to be blessed. Why? Because that's what you would have for us. And as your, as your under shepherd at APOC, Lord, for those of you who are watching, for those of you who are here, we're not just coming to be coming. When you leave, you need to be changed. You need to be, you need to be more of the model that God created than you were last week.